So having that said, I uh, think we can now start with the afternoon sessions. Um, we have three parallel sessions at the moment. Uh, room two, rolling out PLM and ERP simultaneously. Uh, room three, recovering and uh, failing PLM implementation. And in this room, we will continue with secure data sharing in the extended uh, enterprise. Uh, and this presentation will be brought to us by uh, Mr. Uh, Håkan Kardin, who is the CEO of uh, Eurostep out of Sweden, and uh, Mr. Christopher Torsen, who is the manager for engineering small gas turbines of Siemens Industrial Turbo Machinery. So uh, welcome, Håkan, and uh, we're looking forward. Thank you, Gerard. So <coughs> I will start uh, just with a few slides. And then I will happily hand over to, to uh, Christopher Torreson to give the real main pitch of this presentation. Uh, but I will, as I said, start off with a few. Uh, this is, the presentation will be around the extended enterprise, how to share information, how to sh share product data in a secure way. And just as a background, we, it will be around the software code share space that uh, comes from Eurostep. Uh, these are some of the customers we have. So as you can see from the slide, the main pickup of this is uh, really within aerospace and defense. Uh, but we are also moving into uh, automotive with Scania and Volvo, for example, uh, building and construction a little bit. And uh, we are seeing an increased interest in the same way of working and the same way of addressing this within the energy sector. I'm happy here to have uh, one of the representatives from the energy sector with me, so he will talk more about this later on. Uh, just a summary slide of Share Space, because it's different from the other PLM tools that have been presented at the conference. It's really a, a software purely designed for collaboration, so it's not an in-house PLM or ERP tool or something like that. So it's designed for collaboration. Then you have to look at a certain and number of features that you must fulfill. So security is very, very important. If it security is not fulfilled, then no collaboration will happen. Ownership of information, protection of IPR, there has been a number of presentations uh, touching upon that topic, but it, it, again, it's very important. Simple things like being able to have several multi uh, identifiers on the same part is also very important because if you collect and consolidate information from different sources. If this is not working, there is not going to be a good uh, sharing of product data. Uh, and then we have notifications, of course, if anything changes somewhere, the other partners uh, sharing this information sh should be made aware of it. You can subscribe to that. We work a lot with consolidation of information because we take information from different sources, put it in one context, and Many times we see actually that the value of this becomes much richer than the, the value of each component. Uh, finally, we had, we, Eurostep, we don't provide much authoring software, so we accept that there is a lot of authoring software, there's a lot of CAD tools, CA tools, uh, documentation tools, etc. But the issue and the real value that we provide is really bringing this information created somewhere into a collaborative environment. Uh, the idea with this uh, tool is it should be easy to set up a collaboration project. Uh, it should have minimal impact on, on the partners involved uh, because everyone has the internal IT system, everyone is used to working with the internal processes. And to be able to run a collaboration, start up a collaboration project easily, you can't interfere with all these things because there's a lot of investment and knowledge uh, in this. It's standard based. Uh, step PLCS and uh, some other standards, uh, but we can also, of course, manage information in native forms. It could be uh, uh, CAD files in native forms, PDF documents, JT files, and so on. So it's not about the content, standardizing the content here, but standardizing the, the product structure really here. And we talk about sharing instead of exchange, because if you, if you are very good on data exchange, you have a good chance to end up in a mess, actually, when it comes to configuration management. So the notion of sharing is very important. My final slide before uh, bringing Mr. Torres on, uh, on stage. This, these are benefits, and I know Christopher will talk about more benefits here, but these are what we hear from some of our customers, and I think it's basically divided into three parts. So the first part is, business collaboration can be used in a very strategic and 
proactive way when this is actually up and running and working and is secure and all these kind of things. So instead of looking at collaboration as a necessary evil thing to happen, it's, you can, it can be used in a strategic way. It should be easy to add and remove partners, of course. The second group of bullets here is about the quality of data. Everyone should actually be able to trust the quality of data in a sharing environment. Because if there's no trust, if there are issues around the data, the sharing will not happen in the, in the way it should. Uh, and finally, the last group here is about the control of data and, and uh, stable contractual agreements and so on. And we see that, as especially I would say, right now within defense and their suppliers. They are the, the, the different MODs are buying information and we have with this a, a standardized way for actually contract for information and check that the information received is, is uh, following these contracts. So, sort of marketing pitch. Uh, hopefully, uh, Christopher Tourism will uh, agree and <laughs> even <laughs> emphasize some of these arguments. So, uh, and I asked you, it was four months ago or something, can you please come with me to this conference and talk, because Christopher is not the PLM guru as such, but coming more from the industry and, and uh, the business side. And uh, I think that's really valuable for everyone in, in the room to hear that, that view. So thank you very much for joining me on stage. Thank you. Yeah, it's correct, as Håkan says. I'm, uh, I'm from the industry, so don't uh, ask me any tricky questions about uh, the, the, what's inside the PLM system. So. Um, I'm uh, heading the engineering department in uh, Siemens Energy in Finspång, Sweden. <coughs> and I will talk about a project that we are currently running together with Eurostep to implement their share space for co collaboration with suppliers and customers. Um, I will uh, touch on these areas. I will make a short presentation about uh, what we do in Finspång, a little bit about our products. I will talk about the requirements for our collaboration and how we made the evaluation to find out that we should implement share space and the implementation that we are currently running. And I will also, also talk a little about, about the, the future, where, what is the next step. Um, Siemens Energy in Finspong, uh, we are a gas turbine manufacturing site, uh, producing gas turbines in range from 8 to 60 megawatts. Uh, and we're actually covering the whole chain for the product, from uh, R&D, developing new turbines, selling, engineer, manufacturing, and then the full uh, uh, aftermarket and the full lifetime with service. Uh, we sell to power generation solutions for oil and gas industry, for power generation industry, but we also do tailor-made solutions for oil and gas industry with compressors pump, meaning that the gas turbine is driving the pump the pumps or compressors. And we deliver also turnkey power plants uh, for combined heat and power. We're approximately 2,700 employees, and we are a one and a half billion euro company. This is the product that we supply to our customers. We actually supply them complete in a package. Uh, what you see in the middle is the core turbine, actually generating the power, but we need a lot of auxiliaries for our turbines. So when it arrives to, to the customer, we more or less plug it in and we can start to produce electricity power. Um, we produce 50 to 60 turbines per year. We make more, more turbines, but complete packages in the range between 50 and 60. And as I mentioned, for the oil and gas industry and uh, industrial power generation customers, we sometimes make very uh, tailor-made solutions, uh, very special products, uh, but, a lot, but most of them is fairly standardized. Some typical data for, for projects, we, uh, it's a wide range how much engineering hours we spend uh, in, in our projects. Uh, most standardized 1,500 and go up to 20,000 hours or more. So, and a gas turbine uh, is approximately 10,000 parts. Of course, it depends how you calculate it. But uh, that's what you can identify. Uh, the core turbine, that is manufactured in-house and has its special requirements, meaning that we identify each and every part and we manufacture it. But the package that you can see, the auxiliary system, lube oil, fuel system, etc., we use sub-supplier for manufacturing and we just assemble them uh, in our workshop. 
uh, which gives a different requirement for a PLM structure. And that is mainly what I will talk about today. Uh, and as I mentioned, we do customer adaptations, which of course uh, puts on the demands on, on the product data. And typically we change 5% of the parts you change in each and every product. And as the volume is quite low, 50 to 60 machines, we can't have a huge uh, team of people just uh, putting in product data and maintaining product data. So we have to do it in a more efficient way. We are global. Uh, okay, manufacturing is made in, in Finspong, but sometimes we cooperate with other Siemens Unity uh, companies uh, around the world for local assembly, uh, where the customers has requirements for local content. Uh, our customers is worldwide, uh, in all parts of the world, uh, and also our supply base is, um, is global. We are shifting constantly suppliers trying to find new, better suppliers lower cost, etc. And we also have partners uh, around the world doing engineering work for us, which also puts up requirements for our collaboration. This is our uh, tool landscape uh, with our most important system. We use SIP as our ERP system. We have a team center and PDMS for CAD tools, and we use COMOS for system engineering. Those systems are actually limited link to each other. We don't have a, a PLM system connecting all the, the, the tools together, unfortunately. So we're very much document driven in our processes, unfortunately, you can say. And that means that we share documents with suppliers, we also share documents internally to, to do this. Um, of course, we want to, in the future, to uh, to have an integrated platform, one single data entry, and uh, you can update all systems. But we are not there. Uh, we have been running uh, studies to do this, but it always ends up that the cost is too high, um, and it's too challenged to do it. But to go a certain step in this, we have decided to go for the collaboration platform. But that will give us some uh, benefits uh, in this. Uh, respect. So, I will talk a little bit uh, about the requ requirement. I have already touched on this a little bit, but uh, we have our in house system uh, and we need to share data with suppliers, etc. But it's very difficult to connect those systems up to sub suppliers. The, uh, the security requirement to connect is too high. And it's not just flexible. It can take up to a year because we have a couple of partners that it's actually working into our in-house systems. But it's taken typically a year to get it approved and to get the IT system to work. So therefore, we have been for many years looking at the hub solution to be able to cooperate with suppliers. We have suppliers, as I mentioned, which do engineering and manufacturing to a different extent. We have uh, suppliers that do the full engineering and we just buy it as one part, like a generator. But we also have suppliers that just doing manufacturing. And as I mentioned, sometimes we assemble locally in other countries and there we have a, a supplier base in that country and also local engineering. And we need to collect all the information. In the end, we collect all the information to store it to make sure that we know what we have delivered in product. And then, of course, we, uh, er we have erection and commissioning of our turbines. We have to make the, the data available. They are normally in-house Siemens people doing this, but still it's too tricky for them to search for the information in our systems. So we would like to publish the documentation in a better way. Um, and later on, when the, the pro product is up and running, uh, we have local service hubs uh, that really need access to data. Uh, when they change uh, components during maintenance service, they need to update our systems. And maybe most of all, uh, most important of all, our customers. Uh, they have huge demands for information and documentation. Typically, when we deliver a product, we send them a lorry of documents. Uh, slowly, it's getting to electronic uh, 
documentation, but uh, to my surprise, they still require papers. But it's a lot of documentation that we supply for our customer. And we also exchange this during the, the project execution. So that puts up um, a lot of requirements for the hub. Uh, we have actually worked together with Eurostep for many years to study uh, this concept. And uh, it's not only a requirement to publish information to our external partners. We also want to receive back the information. We want them to upload it into to the hub so we can access it and, and if we want, import it into our systems. Um, so looking at benefits to use the hub, um, and as Hoka mentioned, instead of exchanging, we would like to share information, so we have the same information that we are looking at. And uh, we see advantages. We can continue to work with our in-house system uh, as the day-to-day -day business. We don't have to change anything in our process. And one important thing is the flexibility. We are changing sub-suppliers constantly, maybe between 100 and 200 sub-suppliers, new sub-suppliers every year. And we, we must be able to integrate them in a very fast and easy way. And of course, flexibility in, in the, the integration. Security is, is uh, of course, the other part. I mean, we have high demands to protect our uh, information and just share it with a the uh, companies that we have uh, made uh, agreements with how to handle the information. So in the hub, we will be able to handle the documentation in a good way. Uh, we can uh, trace who has access to it, and it's clear who has the ownership of the information. So that is advantages that we see with the hub. We. Uh, started two years ago a project to uh, uh, verify if the concept would work or not, if the cost was too high to implement it, if we would meet our business case. Um, and we were making this study. We actually set up a, a pilot uh, to verify this. And we agreed with three sub-suppliers um, uh, to work on us in this project to make a study. Two of them were very enthusiastic uh, about the concept. One of those was quite skeptic, uh, actually. But I think it was good because it gave us also a view of what do we need to do when we will start to integrate hundreds of suppliers? What will the process be to, in to integrate them? How much do we do? Do we need to go there and convince them? Or can we just demonstrate this? And they will, will connect to our because they very often have their own way of publishing documentation information. Um, and uh, in the project also, also to develop a plan how to implement it, looking at the cost, resources, etc. We were identifying all the requirements we had, and that was a lot. Well, they, these were consolidated to make sure that we fulfill the requirements from the business, that we actually got the solution that we need. We can work efficiently. We don't have to employ more engineers. We can actually reduce the number of engineers uh, when we use this tool. And of course, that it fulfills our processes, iterary crime requirements, and our strategies, and uh, legal requirements. I will come back to this. this. We have high requirements of how to handle information. This is an example of one of the sub-suppliers that we were working together with. Uh, they are manufacturing local electrical rooms. can seem simple, but it's quite a detailed work to do, you know, and it's, uh, it involves a lot of functions. Uh, steel manufacturing, installation, cabling, uh, etc. I will not go through this in detail, but just to show that we are exchanging a lot of information with the sub-suppliers. Typically, this would be uh, five files filled with documents to produce this. And everything is exchanged via mail. And it's difficult to keep track of what have we sent, what have they received. Uh, the change process, because changes are made. Our customers require different things. We fi find out that we want to change things. 
the change process is also driven by a mail. Uh, we also realized that uh, the sub suppliers, they didn't have a way of storing the information, so they could actually not structure this in a good way. It was difficult to, for them to tell us what is the latest information uh, that they have received. What should they manufacture? So, working with the hub concept, uh, of course, we are publishing all the data into the hub. It's structured. Uh, we can see exactly what we have published. The change process is made in a hub. You can log all the changes. You can easily track what have, what have changed. And, uh, of course, everything is stored. And that is a huge advantage, both for us internally. We know exactly what we have asked the supplier to manufacture, but also for the, for the supplier. They can go in there and see, this is the requirement, this is the latest documentation. So this, this study was very successful, I would, say, I would say. It was actually a surprise to see how many mails we were sending to be able to manufacture this. But that also proved how successful it will be to implement this. Um, in the project, we're also evaluating the tools. Um, and uh, in the end, we decided to go with, with uh, Share Space. Uh, Eurostep was in the project from the beginning, so of course they had an advantage. But we, I think we did a very good evaluation of other tools. And this is the main drivers why we selected Share Space. It's a hub concept and it can store data. It's a database where you can store files. Um, because when the sub suppliers start to load information into the hub, it doesn't mean that we will import this to our, or download it to our in house system. We might save the information in the hub because we don't need that detailed information into our systems. And also, it's possible to consolidate information. Since I mentioned that we are not connecting our system in-house, uh, we have difficulty to consolidate. But in the hub, we actually have possibility to take information from the different system and collect them in the hub. Uh, and a web interface, uh, of course, because it needs to be easily accessed from, from many different uh, users. And it has a good traceability and reporting. That is very important to be able to track when we are in discussion with a sub-supplier. What have they done? What changes have they made? What extra cost will they charge? Then the traceability is, is extremely important. I will not go through uh, uh, what we what found out from the other systems we have evaluated, but, but we didn't find any system with, that, with this concept. It was more a, li a link uh, approach in the other systems that we were evaluating. Point-to-point -point approach, which we believe that will add a lot of cost for engineers sitting and downloading, uh, deciding what to load into the system. So that was the background why we decided to go with, with Eurostep. Uh, some features also that we found out uh, would, that would uh, reduce the cost in an implementation program. The Share Space database is an uh, out of the box solution. Uh, we make no changes to the database. Where we make changes is, is a user interface that will be adapted for, for our uh, processes and roles to make it very efficient for the users. And uh, also, as I mentioned, there are adaptations when it comes to export control codes. We have we are very careful of, uh, of um, handling information since we are sometimes selling to countries that might be a little bit sensitive and we need to make sure that we have classified all the information in the correct way. So that was um, some part. And actually what was demonstrated in this uh, pilot was that we will be able to, to reach our business case. It was proven that we have, will have access to, um, to the right information, sub-supplier and also internally that we know what we have uh, uh, published. Uh, 
Today we have a huge cost for transferring data between system and to, to send it to sub-supplies via mail, publishing in SharePoints, or just moving data from, from different systems. So there we see cost reduction. But also increasing quality in product data. When we can start to import the product data from the sub-suppliers, we can update our own system. Today it's done fully manually. We receive a document, an engineer is typing in the, the part number, and uh, sometimes it's not correct. And very often we find out that it's not correct. When you import the data, of course you get a higher quality. But we also see that we can reduce cost, uh, NCC cost. Our sub-supplier is manufacturing the wrong things. We have to change it. When we receive to our workshop and we should assemble it, we discover they have not manufactured to the right specification. They have not got all the requirements that we have. And one important thing was not to add a lot of cost for uh, loading data into the PLM systems or to the hub. So uh, it was a, a good result, which um, later on we, we made, a, made a business, we updated business case and we finally got an approval from management in Siemens to implement this. And we are now in, in the implementation phase uh, starting this financial year. We have um, decided to structure it in, in three different steps or to implement it in three different steps. Uh, the first step is uh, very simple, you can say. It's just to be able to publish doc documentation. Um, the second step is to publish information. When we start to load information, not only documents, into to the system and start to exchange parts and, and data with the supplier. And the second step is sharing information. That is actually when the sub-supplier is uploading data which they own and we use it in our system. That's the, the last step. Uh, and the implementation plan that we have now looks like this. We started this 1st of October this year with the first step, and just a st startup phase. And then we have identified something which we call common one, and that is to make the infrastructure to connect uh, share space to our in-house systems. And then we will go into the first step, which is we call supplier one, and that is to be able to publish documents for our sub-supplier. Uh, and we will then start to work together with uh, the same sub-suppliers and to really uh, use this uh, live or to, to, to start using the system. And then we'll go into something we call common two, and that is to connect more systems. Uh, and later on to be able to load documentation from our subsidies. So that is what we will do this, this financial year. It might not seem very advanced, but uh, we want to have this uh, solution up and running and uh, introduce it to en engineers, get the processes in place before we go into the next st st step and start to uh, share information. Um, this is a little bit more what we, we about the future, the next step, we will, and that is actually the, the last step I, I described, and that is to share information. And they, this is really when it starts to pay off. As I mentioned, we, uh, we do part of the engineering in-house, but the sub-supplier is doing a lot. Today we have difficulty to share what we are doing and what they do. If we do basic engineering, uh, it's difficult to provide the information for them to continue to do detailed engineering. So, but in this step, we will be able to, to publish. We will do the structure, uh, the, the bill of material structure, and we will ask the sub-supplier to fill in with their, their uh, structure and their parts and their information about components. And we will use that information. It will still be owned by them, but we will use it. We will import it into our system, so we get a complete bill of material for our, our uh, turbines. Uh, 
and also later on in the aftermarket when we start to replace components on the turbines we need to know when the service engineer is there and changing a transmitter from one type to another because there is a new version they need to to load it into the system so we can still have the complete picture of what is uh, um, fitted on on the turbine uh, I mentioned COMOS. We use COMOS for system engineering, for electrical engineering, for INC. And I think we are a quite advanced COMOS user. Uh, we have come quite far in, um, in developing this. We can actually take a sales configuration file, in, port it into COMOS, and configure the complete project from an engineering perspective. And what we do now is that we are continue with our COMOS system to be able to create the complete bill of material structure inside COMOS, since we have no other system that can handle this. Because we have a complex structure, we use a dual structure, we don't have a traditional CAD uh, model or a structure. We use a system structure instead. Uh, and COMOS can handle it. So the next step is actually to integrate COMOS into to share a space, to be able to do, to share information or be able to get it flow uh, with our sub supplies. This is an example. Uh, everything is about the data consistency uh, to, be able to make sure that we have the correct information in, in all systems. We made an example. We took a valve on the turbine and then we identified how many documents have we described this valve in. And we found out it was 45 documents. You can imagine how much work it is when you find out that you have put in the wrong data of this well. You have to go through all, the, all those. But when we work with share to share information instead, we just have to, to update it once. Uh, and we can share the data with share a space to our sub supplier and they immediately have the, the right information. So this will be a very important step uh, when we start to implement it. My last slide will be a little about uh, the future. Do we have any other thoughts? And uh, yes, we do. We have a lot of ideas where we want to go. And one, one area which we will uh, imp have to improve is logistic. When the sub supplier is sending equipment to us, we can't in before say exactly how it will be delivered. It's huge equipment, so it, can, it will be disassembled before we start to, uh, when it's received to our goods goods receiving. So it's difficult to identify it. So we want the sub supplier to tell us and put it into the system, we will deliver this box or this box, etc. So we know what we will receive. The same also when we assemble our turbine on site. Uh, typically it uh, arrives with 100 boxes, 2 times 2 meters, with, filled with components. And when the people start to open the boxes, they don't know actually what it is. It's a valve, yes, but where should I put it? But uh, in the future, we'll be able to identify it, look in the system, where should it be uh, erected on the turbine. So that, is, that will be the next step that we will um, try to implement, or the future step. So I hope that uh, gives a picture of uh, what we are doing in our project together with Eurostep. Thank you very much, Christopher. I have two slides, if I may. Uh, so just a summary then about, we have been talking about, or Christopher has been talking about the hub concept, the hub approach. And I think it's what we hear at these, these kind of conferences that are, of course, huge investments in ERP system is in PLM system. And because there are new requirements in business co collaboration, it won't mean that you guys are going to replace your internal ERP or internal PLM system because it's basically can't be done. It's too, too, too big. So... They are there, but they are not, they are not designed really to, to support extender enterprise. Internal systems are internal, basically, and that's, that's the intent. That's how they were designed. Um, the hub approach, when Christopher talks about consolidating data from different sources, it solves a lot of issues on configuration management. Exchange is not doing that. Uh, and the hub approach, of course, you can actually apply this data sharing and partnership in an easy way. Uh, so what should be the uh, principles for a hub? It should be really covering information across the whole life cycle because sometimes you want to share 
systems engineering data, requirements data, design data, manufacturing data, product support data, or a mix. So of course, the hub itself has to cover all this information. COTS thinking, it should not be uh, bespoke applications, and finally, it should be secure and easy to use, otherwise this is not going to happen. So with that, Mr. Lichens. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for this, uh, this wonderful presentation and this uh, delightful insight. Uh, I think we have time for one question. So, any questions in the audience? Ah, in the back. Good afternoon. My name is Paulo Vilas of Roimbra Air. I'd like to know if you have any pilot customer, or any pilot uh, vendor using the system, and how was the acceptance of the, this hub part of the vendor? I, I had some problem here. How's the acceptance by users of the system, or? Acceptance from the, from the, from the external users. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. Uh, should I start, or? Yep. Because you, you haven't... You're not there yet with your project, I think. But what we see in other products is that as long they can keep using their internal systems or the IT tools that they're already using. So it's not a, an issue, really. And you set up the system so it really it reacts on the change in the hub uh, collaboration hub or it actually ex exports something into the hub based on certain conditions. So we have, for example, Scania working with one of the suppliers in, in China, and the Chinese partner, they were sending data in Excel to, to Scania, which has based, they are continuing with that. So basically the user at this uh, site in, in China, they, they don't notice too much different. They are keep on working in Excel in the same way as they did before. And I, I think that's very important. Because there's no time, not enough money to retrain everyone who's supposed to do a collaboration project somewhere in the world. Okay. okay. Well, then, thank you very much, gentlemen, for this enlightening presentation. Thank you.